Ark Invest just dropped a whopper on everyone. We're looking at a possible $15,000 price target in Tesla pre-split. But keep in mind, I think we could actually see $15,000 or higher. So let's talk about this and discuss. We're going to look at the report that Ark Invest just released. What's going on, traders? Welcome to the channel. My name is John. That's Groot. We trade options here. So let's dive in real quick. We'll take a peek, cover some of the details, and I'm gonna explain what I think ARC is missing about this prediction and why I think we can go way higher. All right, so we are in, it looks like they just released this on Friday after hours. So uh, thank you, Tasha Kini, ARC Invest. I'm sure Sam, Chorus, and a few others were in on this too. But more importantly, we will talk about what ARC did. So their previous price target was set for 2024, so a few years from now. And they'd set it for $7,000, which was about $1,400 pre-split, or 1400 adjusted for the split, actually. And what happened now is that they decided it was time to mess with the formula a little more. They were getting more updates, seeing kind of how autopilots full self-driving and the possibility of the Tesla network coming online was becoming and realized it was time to mess with this more. So they now estimated that we're looking at an expected value of $3,000. Bear case, if things don't work out, we're at about $1,500 a share. So a little over a double from where we're at now. And then bull case here is $4,000. I think they're lowballing this, so we can talk about that a little more in a minute. But more importantly, I like how they arrived at this forecast. This is really important to me as someone who kind of digs in the numbers, is sort of a nerd. And when it comes to simulations, modeling, Monte Carlo is the winner. And by doing all those sets of random configurations, uh, they actually incorporated tons of simulations into this. And that actually strengthens the data further. So I like that we will take it. So in their bull and bear case examples, we are looking at a few different things such as uh, what you're noticing is using Wright's law, the cost or average selling price should get lower, the velocity of sales should be significantly higher, and then we should start seeing insurance revenue uh, quite significant in terms of what Tesla could collect. So. Um, one thing I found interesting is if their bull case works out, you'll actually see insurance revenue drop, and that could be because of full self-driving, meaning insurance prices are significantly less. Uh, now, what I find interesting here, and this is what we want to look at, is that as we go to what they updated to their model, they basically pushed out one year to 2025. They refined estimates for Tesla's efficiency, which is great and they added insurance to the model which i think did have a big impact in terms of their price targets and then also they did increase the probability because elon has been quite bullish on full self-driving so i find that interesting and i think he's uh not telling us everything but it seems like it's coming online very soon now what i find interesting here if you look at their model right if you just consider like a bell curve we're basically looking at the 50 percent here and this is like that that median or that middle range of the curve and that's why they're coming to this expected value here at about three thousand dollars a share uh, but in general, these look great, but as you go out on the S curve more towards the ends, right? Let's go to the end limits where the probability of likelihood gets really low towards zero or so. Uh, I find this interesting, $28,000 a share. That is nuts. And this would be like your three, four, five standard deviation type moves. Maybe not likely, but I think ARC is missing a few things, which leads me to believe I think we'll be between 3000 and here, I think will be actually higher than their expected value because what they're not taking into account here, we're just looking at electric vehicles, we're looking at insurance, and then we're only looking at fully autonomous or even human driven ride hailing. So we're basically just looking at their EV business, the insurance business, and like Uber, Lyft. We aren't factoring in solar. We aren't factoring in batteries. We aren't factoring in their commercial lines in terms of maybe they have more subscriptions or um, 
they're charging supercharging across the country they're gonna have to expand that as well i mean tesla has so many levers they can pull including all these screens in the cars for gaming for an app store for other additional revenue so there's a lot that is not being assumed in this model and i think that they probably had it in there but maybe you know that's what's leading to like these higher valuations however i think we end up somewhere there in the future so that's what's worth looking at and i find it interesting as you look at the insurance business right as we look at this they looked at relative to progressives 13 percent margins tesla could achieve margins that are massively higher massively that's almost four times higher than what progressive is doing and progressive is a big company um, their bear case would be like 23 billion annually great but check this out i looked up geico and geico is anywhere today worth about 37 to 51 billion in terms of revenue uh, per year so that's pretty impressive but i think tesla could just eat everyone's lunch because of their data advantage the beauty here oh with that much data uh, the better your data uh, and quality, the better your outcomes in terms of how to guess who's a bad driver, you know, what are the insurance risks, what are the crash risks. And if you think about it in the same way that Apple does this, right? Well, it's really simple when you buy a Tesla, you know, from the website or from the app, you can just add insurance just like that. And then if you get your car and you hadn't even thought about it, well, if you want and need insurance, instead of having to call someone or do all this stuff, fill out all this paperwork, boom, it's right there on your Tesla app. Nice, easy, frictionless. And then the other thing I love from Tesla's standpoint is that what they can do is capture all this data, right? And it's almost like a one-to-one -one parity in terms of cost. If you find out that this type of driving profile is very risky well you can just make it so that your pricing is in parity with that risk and basically what happens is that everything else above that other drivers better drivers are going to be more profitable for you well then you're actually just one to one there is no real risk involved if you can model this correctly so it's just all related to the data how good the quality of it is and how good your system is so that's what's really important here and that's why i think the insurance business is uh has a lot of potential but i think everything centered around the car in general has a lot of potential and that's worth looking at and just tesla and all the companies they're disrupting the type of technology they have their ai business might do really well in the future so it's something to look at and consider and as anyone who's been following knows i am very bullish on tesla and palantir so you are going to want to look at this next video that describes my strategy for how to trade and uh, fund tesla and palantir purchases for long-term growth